Hey guys, Carl Allen. Want to do a quick video for you today to talk about Rapport. Deal makers, what's up? My vision is to completely and utterly disrupt the market for buying and selling small businesses all over the world. Want to do a quick video for you today to talk about Rapport and how to build Rapport and how to build really close relationships with business owners. And then when you do that, you can get super flexible in terms of the creativity of the deal that you're going to propose to take the business over to acquire the business. So what's really interesting about business owners is you've almost got like two separate types of business owner. They can have an identical business, so it can do the same product or service, it can be in the same town, the same income statement, the same balance sheet, the same customers, the same employees. Everything is the same but value and deal structure can be very very different when you factor in the seller psychology i've talked on a lot of other videos why seller psychology is so important when it comes to doing deals uh, the two extreme cases would be a young entrepreneur in or her 30s doing lots of great things having a lot of fun business is doing well but they're prepared to sell the business, but we don't know what for. Every business is for sale. If you had $3 trillion today, you could go out and you could buy Apple. Every single business in the world is for sale. It's just a question of price and terms. Some of the businesses that I own, and I own a lot, I wouldn't sell for 10 or 20 times profit multiples. If somebody came in and offered me a billion dollars for a business that's really worth 10 million, I'm probably gonna sell it, right? Probably I'd sell it for 100 million. Whereas I've got some businesses that I would literally give away because I'm tired of them. You know, I've made my money, the business is doing okay, but you know what, I'm having to still spend a little bit of time on those deals and yeah, I'd rather just give them to somebody else. And that's what you've got to think about when you're looking at sellers. Sellers will think that, not all of them. If you want to buy a really good business where the seller's not motivated at all to do that deal, then you can still buy that business, but you'll have to go down the SBA 7A loan route. Because remember, a business owner that's not motivated to sell wants a high multiple, say a five times multiple, and wants virtually all of the money at closing. That's why we use the SBA. With the SBA, you can do deals up to a six times multiple. Uh, you can do 90% of the purchase price at closing, and then the seller will take a 10% seller note. Yeah, you can do those deals, but they take a long time, and that's fine. But what we're looking for is really the distressed sellers of good businesses. Sellers that are highly motivated to sell a business. It might be sickness, it might be boredom, it might be burnout, it might be frustration. They want to retire. We know there's 10, thousand baby boomers retiring every single day in the United States and tons of them own small businesses. So we've got to factor that in to our analysis and our thinking. But let's get back to rapport. I want to tell you three stories about rapport building that allowed me to do super, super creative deals with sellers. And the first one is why I'm wearing my University of Alabama football hoodie. Now, I spend about half my time in the UK and half my time in the US. Basketball is really my US sport. I also like baseball. Not a huge fan of American football. Uh, I watch it, um, but I'm not a huge fan of college football. I, I think really you've got to be an American or have spent most of your time in America to be really kind of caught up in the buzz of, of college football, right? And, and I'm, I'm not that guy, but I was looking, I was in Alabama actually uh, about a month ago because I own a company in Alabama. So I was, I was down there and obviously in Alabama, in Huntsville and Tuscaloosa and all the places in Alabama, you've got all the University of Alabama um, kind of swag. And then you've also got the Auburn um, swag, which is the other big school. And somebody told me actually that when the University of Alabama play Auburn, there's like 120,000 people go to the games. I, you know, if that was in England, there'd be like 50 people at the games. I, I can't understand it. But I knew that I was going to be talking to a business owner that was a big fan of the University of Alabama football. So roll tight. And what I did deliberately is I bought a University of Alabama jersey and I did a little bit of research on the team and on their coach and on some of the kind of super players that are going to get drafted probably in the coming year. 
And when I had a call with that seller, before I'm even talking about their business, I'm not talking about their income statement, their balance sheet, I'm not talking about their market, I'm not talking about anything like that. Uh, I'm talking to the seller about personal stuff because I wanna build that friendship and I wanna build that rapport. So it makes a massive difference. So I came onto the Zoom um, and I was wearing this University of Alabama hoodie. I knew he was into the University of Alabama because I'd found him on LinkedIn and I'd found him on Facebook. So I knew a lot of things about this business owner. So literally before I opened my mouth to start having a conversation, it's like, dude, roll tight. Like amazing. Like you're, Alan Am you're an Alabama fan. I said, well, I'm not a massive fan of Alabama, but I really, you know, I'd done some research and started talking to him about what I'd found out about the players and the coach and the, 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 the run streak that they've been on and, and all that kind of amazing stuff going back into history. And he was like, man, like, this is amazing. Like, I know we're supposed to be talking about the business, but let's talk about the University of Alabama football. And because I'd done my research, I was able to build incredible, I mean, absolutely incredible rapport with this person. And, and I've just made an offer to buy the business on an annuity deal structure, which means I'm buying the business like you would lease a car. And, and he replied to me by email and said, you know, I think we're in the ballpark. He said, ordinarily, I was looking for all the money at closing, but as I've got to know you and, you know, we've got the same values and, you know, we've built this amazing relationship, I'd love you to have the business and, you know, I'm going to work with you to structure a deal um, in the annuity deal stream. And I'll do another video about annuity deals and I'll walk you through all the benefits and all the values that you have when, when you do annuity deals. They're massively win-win deals. But just for now, think of an annuity deal as buying a business like you would lease a car. So you're just paying for the business every month up to 10 years in time. So that was a great story. And this is why I'm wearing my Roll Tide University of Alabama uh, football um, hoodie for you. The second um, example, which again, wasn't too long ago, and I just acquired this business. So I bought a business in the health and beauty female e-com space. It was a company that uh, does products and serums and extensions for, for ladies with, with eyelashes. And um, I've been looking at this deal and this business was in Scottsdale. And I was in Scottsdale, at, well, I was in Tempe at a real estate uh, investing mastermind uh, with Pace Morby. And the guy that was selling the business uh, was in Scottsdale. So I organized on the Sunday during the mastermind to go and have lunch with this guy, break bread with him and kind of build a relationship. So obviously I'd had a couple of calls with him and he was adamant um, that he wanted uh, $300,000 as a closing payment for this business. Business worth about a million dollars. He won 300 at close and then 700,000 through selling notes and earnouts and all these different things. And that ordinarily would have been a really, really good deal. But I thought, okay, well, that means I've got to come up with 300K. I've got to go and either put my own money in or I've got to find a partner or I've got to go to the bank and that's going to take a whole bunch of time. And he wanted the deal done uh, quite quickly. So yeah, I could have put my money in and then I could have refinanced it out later. But, you know, I always try and do deals with absolutely zero of my own money, even though I've got a lot of money to deploy into deals if I need to. Um, it's just kind of the way I was raised as a Wall Street guy. Just use other people's money, it's out there but time was against me in this particular deal. So I thought, well, let's play the rapport card. So literally, I'm in the Uber going from Tempe to Scottsdale. It's like a 20 minute Uber ride. I'm in the Uber and he's texting me and I've got my two phones. I've got my UK phone and I've got my US phone. So he's texting me on my US phone uh, and I've got my UK phone with me. And I thought, well, let, let's see what I can find out about this guy. I had a couple of calls with him, was getting on great with him, but I didn't really know him in detail. So I pulls up my phone and I find him on Facebook and, and I'm looking through and he's like a huge Tony Robbins fan. So he's liking the Tony Robbins pages. He was at one of the Tony Robbins events a few years ago because uh, I was looking through his timeline and there's photos of that and there's actually a picture of him with Tony. So I'm thinking, right, well, he's a Tony Robbins fan and I bet if he's had a picture with Tony, uh, which I've had, then he will have been in the Platinum Partnership, which I was in, which is Tony's 100 grand a year mastermind where you get to go in his house and get to meet him and, and do a whole bunch of things. So I'm thinking, well, I reckon he's a big Tony Robbins fan. So obviously, so am I. And I've been to a lot of events. And we went there and it was a two hour lunch. 
we spent an hour and 45 minutes just talking about Tony Robbins and then 15 minutes talking about the deal. So for that hour and 45 minutes, I have walked him through all of my experiences with Tony Robbins. He did the same. We talked about doing the firewalks. We talked about doing the Date With Destiny events uh, and all the massive personal growth that both he and I got from those events, even though we'd never met before. Um, I was talking about when I was coming away from the Date With Destiny event, I think in 2018, uh, it was like three o'clock in the morning because Tony has you jumping around for a long period of time and I'm in this euphoric state. And my eldest son, who lives down in Australia, uh, that I talked about a lot, um, he messaged me uh, and he ends up FaceTiming me. And I'm walking back to the hotel in the dark it's the middle of the night in West Palm Beach and I'm like literally like euphoric. I'm absolutely like bouncing because I've had this great experience in the day. And he said, oh, dad, like, you know, how much was the, the event? So I was putting about $10,000 because of the, you know, I got the VIP uh, ticket. He's like, oh man, he said, you know, I'm doing really well down here in Australia, but you know, I don't have $10,000 to uh, to spend on going to an event, but I'd really love to go. And I, don't, and I just said to him, you know what? I'm going to pay for you to go. I'm not going to buy you a birthday or a Christmas present, but I'm going to pay for you to go to the Date With Destiny event that's in um, May of next year. And he's like, oh my God, amazing. So I, I'm telling the story of this business owner and I'm telling him about all the stuff I've done with Tony. And he turned around to me and he said, you know what, Carl, you're a special dude. You really are a special dude. Like, you know, I wish I'd have known you like for the last 10 years. Like we could have done some amazing things together. He was telling me about all of the things he wants to do when he sells the business. So we built this absolutely world-class relationship over the course of an hour and 45 minutes over lunch. And then literally 50 minutes to go and I've got to get an Uber back to this real estate event because I was actually speaking about creative business buying. Um, and he looked at me, he said, look, like, how can we get this deal done? I said, well, this $300,000 closing payment, like I'm really gonna to have to go out and raise that and it's gonna to take too long. I said, but I've got an idea for you. He said, go on, what's your idea? I said, so you're giving me $300,000 of inventory, which is really why you wanted the closing payment. You wanted me to buy the inventory and then just give you an annuity structure um, over a number of years. He said, yeah. He said, well, I pay for the inventory, it's there, you can sell it. I said, well, why don't we do this, right? Give me the business now, right? I'm gonna pay you nothing at close. And then when I sell that inventory through to the customer base, uh, so this business had about 80% gross margins. So that $300,000 of inventory, assuming it's all sellable and our due diligence confirmed that it was, that would generate five times that inventory amount. So it would generate about $1.5 million in sales. And I'd be able to push that through in about 90 to 120 days. So all I said to him is, look, let's do this deal. I'll pay you. 50% uh, of all of the revenue that comes from me selling the inventory until I've paid you the $300,000. He said, that's an amazing idea. Like, let's do that, that's great. And we can sign the deal now. So we literally, we signed the deal um, and, and I walked away as the owner of the business. And the kind of, the message in that story is that I'd spent an hour and 45 minutes breaking down the barriers and really just getting to know this guy to the point where he was my buddy. So, you know, it's, it's like if you're, uh, imagine you're in a bar, right? Imagine you're in a bar and um, you're, you're one of your best friends, one of your buddies comes up to the bar and they've, they've forgotten their wallet or their phone. They can't pay for a drink and they really want a drink. You know, you're gonna buy them a drink, aren't you? Or you're gonna lend them some money. You just are, because they're your buddy. You've got a relationship with them. You know them, you like them, you trust them. It kind of works in both ways. If kind of almost a complete stranger walked in, and you, you might have said hello to them in the street, or you might have met them once, and they came up to you in the bar and said, "Hey, you know, remember me? We don't really know each other, but uh, hey, I've, I've, I've no, I've come out without my money. Can you lend me fifty bucks so I can get a few beers and a pizza and and, and go home? Uh, you're gonna, you know what I mean? Like personally, I would do it because I'm just that's that's the way I am. But most people wouldn't. They'd say, well, I don't really know you. In your mind, your, your self-talk would be, I don't really know you. Uh, I'm not sure if I like you yet. Don't know if I trust you. Am I going to get my money back? So you kind of, you're not going to do that. Um, whereas it's the same analogy. If you're talking to a business owner, you know, they are, uh, they're, they're going to do amazing things with you if you build these wonderful relationships. Got one more story for you. Um, 
which is where I kind of took this to the next level. So this was a UK deal. The first two deals I talked about were in the US. This third deal uh, was an engineering company in the UK. So it was a broker deal. Uh, I don't normally go through business brokers, but I did in this instance. The One of the brokers I, I like had, had sent me this deal and said, hey, I know engineering's in your buy box. Uh, do you want to have a look at this deal? So I, yeah, I looked at the information memorandum, which is the document a broker will send you, like a sales prospectus. It doesn't really give you much information, but you, know, you read it. Um, and then the broker said, do you want to have a call with the seller? I said, absolutely. So I get on uh, a Zoom call with the seller and, and I never speak to sellers on the phone. I always do it on Zoom because I want to read their body language. Ideally, you meet them in person, but that maybe comes afterwards. So I'm on Zoom with the seller who was called Tony. Uh, this was a business in the Northwest of England, about three million pound turnover or revenue engineering business. It made tooling uh, for like metal containers and, and car products and all these different things. It was a tooling business, CNC machines, all that kind of stuff. So I'm on Zoom with this guy and I'm going through the rapport building process. You know, I couldn't find him on LinkedIn, couldn't find him on uh, Facebook. So I didn't really know much about him, but gets on the call and I'm asking a question. So, hey, tell me, tell me about your family. So he's kind of going through, you know, the two big passions in his life, he said, were his love of football or soccer, as we call it in the UK, and the love of his family. And he was talking about um, his team. So his team um, was, so he's based in Liverpool, this business. And there's two big soccer teams that play in Liverpool. You've got Liverpool FC, who are like the, playing red. And then you've got Everton FC, who play in blue. So like Alabama and Auburn are the big rivals in the state of Alabama, Liverpool and Everton are the two soccer teams that rival each other. Uh, in the city of Liverpool in England. So and what you tend to find uh, when you look at an average family in Liverpool is some of the members of the family are red, so they're Liverpool fans, and some of the members of the family are blue, they're Everton fans. And obviously when they play each other, you know, nobody talks to each other in the house for a few days. And you see that in lots of other towns and cities across England. But what was really interesting is this gentleman, his daughter just had a baby. Um, so the whole his whole family was Evertonian, they were blue, but his daughter had married a, a Liverpool fan, a red, and they'd had a baby. And just to wind Tony up, the uh, his son-in-law had gone to a family event and he dressed the little baby in a bright red baby's soccer kit for Liverpool. And that had really like upset Tony. Uh, obviously it was all very jovial and it was done kind of as a joke, but Tony was, was a little bit miffed about it. And this was a Monday morning, I was having this call and the event uh, was on the Sunday night, just literally the following morning. And I could tell he was really kind of not happy about it. So I was told me the story and then we talked a little bit about the business. And then I thought, Tony, I wanna come and see you. I wanna come and see the business. I wanna have a look around. He's like, great. So we'd set the appointment for the Friday uh, at the end of the week so we could go out for lunch as well. And I literally put the phone down and I called my assistant, Selena. I said, hey, can you go online and get me a baby soccer kit in Everton Blue? She's like, why, have you had a baby? I'm like, no. So I told her the story. She's like, wow, that's a really good idea. So literally, uh, two days later on the Wednesday, this kit turned up at my house and I gift wrapped it. Um, and then on the Friday, I went down to the office and we walked in and he was kind of quite a gruff individual. You know, he was quite, quite grumpy, you know, an old tired, retiring baby boomer. So, you know, not, not the friendliest of chaps. So we walked in uh, and I'm in his office and before he takes me around, I said, hey, Tony, I got something for you. He's like, what, like what, what have you got for me? He actually joked, said, have you got me a check? Uh, Cause he thought I was just gonna walk in and buy the business. So I said, hey, I got this present for you. So I gave it to him. And he opened it up and there's this little baby, it was like tiny, this little baby Everton kit. He's like, what's this? I said, well, I was really touched with the story that you told me um, on Monday. And I thought, you know what? I, I, I thought it was bad that your son-in-law had done that. So I'm actually gonna go and get you the, this kit and I, you know, I wanna give it to you. So I said, anytime your little baby granddaughter's in your house, put her in the Everton blue kit. And he literally, he bear hugged me. He absolutely bear hugged me. Is like, I can't believe you've done that. Somebody I don't really know yet, 
you 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 kind of latched onto that. You knew it bothered me, and you went and you did that. Like, can you imagine though, right? When you do something like that, and I'm not suggesting you all go out and buy baby soccer kits, but can you imagine if you did something like that? The amount of no like and trust you're actually building between you and the seller. You know, the big takeaway from this video is don't think deals are all about numbers because they're not. Numbers, they're a part of the deal. Sometimes they're a sensible part, sometimes they're a very small part. You build no like and trust, whether it's University of Alabama, whether it's Tony Robbins, whether it's baby Everton soccer kits, however you can create links. Go find sellers on LinkedIn. Go find sellers on Facebook. Uh, most of them are on there, not all, but most. Find out some things about them. Where do they go on vacation? Uh, did they tag a post that they were in St. Lucia or Aruba or um, wherever they were at? And if you've been there, or even if you haven't, I, once I, I saw a seller had checked into a restaurant in San Diego they'd never been to. And I actually went and looked at the menu uh, and then when I was in the meeting, I said, oh yeah, you went to that restaurant. Yeah, what did you have? Did you have the Reuben? Is it, is it good? And he was like, oh my God, like, it's amazing. And you know, don't think that uh, you're imposing and you're spying on people. It's all about building relationships and no like and trust. It's massively, massively important when you're doing deals. So hope you find that useful and I will see you soon for the next video. Until then, bye-bye for now. Roll time.